And in this lesson here, we will change the slide size, the views of a presentation, and set the file properties for our PowerPoint file. Now, in terms of practical use, this one is the most practical in terms of day-to-day -day use of PowerPoint, especially if you're using PowerPoint to generate a static image. In other words, if you're using this as possibly a graphic design tool, you could create your slides and you can customize the slide size. So the way you do that, that changing of the slide size, is that you go to the Design tab of the ribbon, and you should know about this one right here. Under Customize Slide Size, you can change from the standard 4.3 to a widescreen 16.9 uh, 16 aspect ratio, or you can customize the slide size, as you can see here. So now from here, you can click on this drop-down and choose from several different varieties, and the slides will be sized 4, and then you can choose from this list. If you're designing your slides to be printed and distributed in printed format, then maybe it makes more sense to create your slides so that they show up nice on 8.5 by 11 inch paper. And so you can see then when I make a selection here, the width and the height changes. Now in terms of the practical application, if you're designing a slide and you want to use it for a YouTube thumbnail or a Facebook banner or something like that where you know the pixels then you have to make your adjustments in terms of the, you have to specify, you have to use custom and then specify a specific width and height. Now the challenge is that the 10.653 inches by 8.1 inches, that can be a little challenging. So you either have to be a little bit creative about Googling the aspect ratio in terms of what you are trying to design for and Google the width and height in terms of the inches, or you can use one of many uh, free tools that are available in terms of converting the inches to pixels. So if you just do a quick Google search on convert inches to pixels, one of the ones that I like to use is this one, inch to pixels conversion calculator at unitconversion.org. If I give this a click, all I have to do is just type in my inches value and then it'll tell me exactly how many pixels that is. So if you're designing your slides and the intended output for your slide is it's going to be a static image and that's going to be a Facebook banner, then just type in the thing that you're looking for in terms of uh, the dimensions, so Facebook banner dimensions is my Google search. It tells me here that 820 by 312. So now I can take that information, 820, and convert that into inches, and then I can plug that information into PowerPoint if I'm using this as a graphical design type of a tool. So that's how you change the slide size. That's why you would change the slide size. And I would expect on the test that it would be fairly straightforward in terms of just changing the aspect ratio or possibly turning your slides into portrait mode. And here you're imagining a slide deck that rather than be on a monitor that is landscape mode, maybe you have a monitor that is turned for use at a trade show or something like that. So I'll cancel out of this and that's the overview of changing the slide size. In terms of the presentation views, what it's really asking you here to know about is this. If you go to the view tab of the ribbon, you want you just to have an understanding of these different presentation views. So I recommend that you click through each of these and understand the outline view, just a way to navigate through really an outline, a text-based outline of your slide deck. Slide sorter we've looked at before. The notes page just changes your slide deck into the notes pages. So there's the slide, there's any notes you've added about the slide. And then the reading view, I know no one who uses the reading view. That is essentially just a look at your slide deck. And one of the most confusing things about the reading view is how do you get out of the reading view? So if you go down to the status bar here, you can change back to a normal view. And that'll actually take you back to the last normal view you were using. So to truly change back, you have to click there. And again, 90 to 90 8% of the time you're working with PowerPoint, in my estimation, you're going to be working in this normal view, even should you decide to go down and add notes to one of your slides. Now, finally, the third thing we talk about in this lesson is the ability to change the file properties. And for that, what you want to do is go to the file tab of the ribbon. And before I do that, I just want you to notice that I do have a hidden slide in my deck here. So I'm going to go to the file tab of the ribbon. And from the info, 
what we're concentrating on is this section right here. This is what Microsoft wants you to know for exam purposes. Just how to view the properties of the file, how to possibly add additional categories or tags. All you have to do is click and you can start typing in a tag or a category. So we'll just type in the tag demo here. Notice that the number of hidden slides in the deck is identified. The total number of slides is also identified as well as the file size for this PPTX file. To expand all properties, click there and you can see lots of information such as the template it's based on, the presentation format, and then again your text, categories, hyperlink based subject, so you may be asked to add specific pieces of information. It's just a matter of looking up the file properties. And if you're asked to add a manager, then you specify the manager using that. Lastly, let's look at the bottom of this backstage view. And at the very bottom is the options, which brings up this dialog box here. And specifically, let's look at the save options that you have in PowerPoint, especially concentrating on the auto save or the auto recover, I should say, uh, how often that is done and where that is done to, what is the location where the auto recovery information is kept, whether or not the file will be kept in the cloud by default or saved to the computer by default. And if it's saved to the computer by default, where is that file location? Now, in this case here, uh, if you're using a PC, this is going to be looking different. I'm using Windows on a virtual machine that's running on a Mac, so technically it thinks that this is a network location. But all this information is pretty straightforward to set, whether you're using a virtual machine or just a regular PC. It's going to look more like this directory or this file location here. If you notice in our look at the file properties, one of the properties that is set is the author. And if you want to change that, you can go to the general tab of your PowerPoint options and set the username, the initials. Most of the time that's never going to change. It may for testing purposes. And then any kind of office background or office themes you want to use can be set from right here. Now, as I cancel out of this, there's one other thing I want to show you before we go, and it is this. If you click on the Properties dropdown, so from the Backstage View back to Info and back over to Properties, there are a set of Advanced Properties, and that brings up this dialog box where you can, again, specify information about the manager, the company, the keywords, the category, same as you did down here. So I would not bother memorizing this information. I would not even bother really looking very closely at this information if you're not preparing to sit for the test. If you are, then just give these things a click through in terms of the statistics. Just have a general understanding of what's on each of these tabs. You'll be able to find it if you are wanting to take that 729.